uh, Come on, I artist. heart. <laughs> I it's it. from my heart. Hello, heart. Heart, I heart. I heart in. All right. It's John Baptiste. We're on the way to my show in Brooklyn, New York. So you better come with. Let's get. This is album release day. Yes. You're playing yes. a show in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. It's so special for us. Thank you for letting us be a part of this experience that we get to be here with you on such a historic day. Oh my goodness. Talking about like setting the intention for tonight. Mm -hmm. This is a big show. What's the intention for you? I think there's a there's really a lot that happens when you set something in motion. Yeah. The recording process, we did this over a year ago and then it's led mm -hmm. to today. And now we're setting something in motion by putting it in the world. You're setting the intention of the album and its life and what it will do in other people's lives. So the show is kind of a launch. It's like, I try to make it feel like the, the thing that in 20 years, 30 years time, I'll look back on fondly, I'll look back on and feel like that was, wow, we really yeah. did that. Yeah. How did you even begin that process of deciding who you wanted to include? So, you know, that was a lot of different folks who yeah. I wanted to work with, or we wanted to work with each other on the last album or in the yeah. past, and, you know, it didn't come together. And then there were artists I discovered, you know, there was um, a singer and trombonist, a Catalonian singer trombonist, Rita Paez. We collaborated, and I discovered her music online, and she is an unsigned great artists that matched the concept of what I was trying to cast at that moment in the album perfectly. And, you know, Leanne Pinna, who was with Little Mix in the UK, then I heard her music, the new music that she was, was working on before. So those were serendipitous. But then, you know, with Lana, she has this way of creating, and I have a way of creating where it's, you're in motion. It's not really like you're doing a, a million takes. It's like you're trying to catch a magic moment. You don't know when it's going to happen, but at the time when I started this record, she was finishing her record, and I started to help her with that record. It, it turned into us making things that were just not necessarily for her record and not for mine. That's how that one happened. And Lil Wayne was like, Wayne and I wanted to work together on the last album. Mm -hmm. We had never crossed paths in New Orleans, but he grew up in 17 Ward Holly Grove, and that's where I grew up partially in New Orleans. So three minutes from where he grew up, is where I grew up. What? And y'all had never really never, crossed paths before? We had obviously heard of each other. Yeah, then, yeah, right. You know, he's at that point where when he's 14 and I'm eight or nine, you know, he's a superstar and my family's a big music family in New Orleans. There's a lot of people in the same circles that we knew in schools and it was so funny that it happened now. <laughs> like, but it was, it's the right time. It just, it's, everything happens at the right time. You gotta just trust the process coming off of a, a Grammy Award winning album, Album of the Year, making this new project, did you feel any pressure, any stress to like deliver something, I don't even want to say better, but something to like level up? Or were you kind of like, let me just create and see? I mean, in particular when I'm thinking about working with Belly and, and the way that we approached it, it was definitely less level up. But then it was also, not just in, in those sessions, but just I had gotten to a place post the Grammys where let's also level up, but like, disrupt and mm. liberate ourselves. Let's not be bound by anything, which I already felt my approach and everything has always been really genreless and boundless and limitless. Yeah. But I think we achieved it. You, you create a movie and a storyboard and characters in the universe for an album. <laughs> like we have storyboards. <laughs> like yeah. To, it, to mean, go to that level. Right. It's just like, I don't know how we got there, but, but here we are. that was it. What like really just like <laughs> makes you so excited, so happy to be bouncing back on stage? Oh, it's just a joy. It's a joy to play for people. It's a joy to be able to make something that is a lasting memory for us as performers and for the people out there. People work hard. People, we were doing a, a signing early and people traveling from far and wide yeah. to be there, to, to be in there, you know, that's really serious. Do you recognize a lot of your fans? I'm sure a lot of them come to the same shows. Like, do you have certain fans you know they're going to be there? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the family. I know John Baptiste is going to be amazing. I think the album is absolutely perfect. It, like, blew my mind entirely. It completely made me reimagine what I thought pop music can do. I'm so grateful to John and all of his collaborators. We love John Baptiste. We're rooting for you. Another Grammy. 
you know, it's interesting. I've toured in the sense of traveling and performing in several countries, several places in the world, done all kinds of stuff. But I've basically never toured, not a tour. So there's so many people that write to us, oh, I've seen me on television, I've seen something that I did a video, or a score, or something I wrote, or a record, you know, all these things that I've put into the world and over years people have connected to. But I've never toured, and this, this will be, for this album, my first tour. What is like the pre-show ritual, something you have to do before every show? Water, I mean, <laughs> That's drink good. Water. hydration is, yeah. I mean, see, like right now, my voice is an octave lower right now because I've been talking and singing for the last week. I'm going to have to raise this. There's exercises and stuff like that. What do your vocal warm-ups look like? I mean, they make you look like a fool. <laughs> Doing stuff with your lips and uh, look, 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 look. You look like a fool for the people. Yeah, do it for the people. Do it for the people, Emily. Hello. Hello, we're roll. back. I look up. Yes. At this point, what are you most excited, what track are you most excited to play live for this audience? Ah, uh, running away. What song are you most proud of from the new album? That's tough, that's tough. Maybe uh, Worship or Butterfly. Butterfly in the air. Butterfly also has a beautiful story behind it. Oh my goodness, Can yes. you tell us a little bit about that story? It's a lullaby in a sense. It's one of those songs that is open for you to interpret the meaning of it, but also has a very personal meaning to me. My wife, you know, when she was going through some things in um, the last year, I would write her lullaby, so that was kind of born out of that scenario of our life. A sacred song and a sacred tone. With such a personal song, does are, are you able to perform it on stage? Like, does that take on a whole other level of, like you were saying, like getting mentally prepared for that? It's actually the easiest. There's something about that kind of intimacy mm. and, and wordlessness mm. and emotion transfer. That comes more natural to me. It's just, I'm, I'm in the moment, I'm here with you, and this is what it is, the real thing. I mean, this is, this is me, I'm giving that. So yeah. that's very easy to do that. Well, you do something special after your shows now that I wouldn't ask you about. It's called Love Riots, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay, tell us a little bit about what to expect from Love Riot. And are you doing one tonight? We might, you I might. think. Okay, it's just okay. a spirit, like, the, 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 it has to get there. You can't just make it be like, you're just gonna do it. The name came from those days when we would do it in the street corner and subways of New York City and the Lower East Side and the L train and the A train, the one train we would go and we would play for people in, in the train on the street corner and people would gather and then we would march and we would take those people and it would turn into like, how similar to you know a, a, a funeral in New Orleans or a second line tradition in New Orleans. We would take that group of people up to another establishment or somewhere else unexpected and gather more people and then it would turn sometimes into hundreds of people spontaneously gathering. And at one point we did it and they started shouting, one more song, one more song, one more. And the police came and it was just like cops on horseback. <laughs> they thought it was a riot. Then we started running and then everybody listening started running behind us. And that's when in my mind, it was like they realized we were just playing music. They thought it was like something because oh, wow. it's blocking the street. Yeah. And somebody called and was like, there's something going on. So I was like, yeah, it's like a love riot. It's intense and yeah. But but when people get close to it it just changes. You feel it. Wherever we land it feels right. <laughs> you know, it starts to happen. Stuff happens. It's amazing. For 
all your fans are gonna watch this. Anything that you wanna say to them right now? I love y'all. I love you even if I don't know you. Thank you so much. I see you somewhere down the road. This is a great day. More love in the world. Thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here and don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. See you next time.